have Kenny Bernstein, the lame choice, in the funny car final against Mark Oswald. This will be interesting. In the meantime, Butch Leo and his crew changing rear slicks. Now, these are probably not new tires. They're perfectly cured tires ready for this racetrack. And now, let's go to Kenny. Well, you couldn't ask any more out of a race car or a driver than that performance by Kenny Bernstein, a 572. Kenny, we'll give you lane choice. Well, that's good. It, uh, it shook real hard and knocked the tire loose again, but that's the same thing it's been doing all day in the right lane. But uh, consistency, as you know, is what wins these things. And... Dale and the guys have just done super today and kept it in that area. I hope I didn't hold McEwen up a little. We went through a little different procedure up there than normal, but but I hope not. I don't think you did. Congratulations, going into the finals. Thank you. About time. So it's been a wait for Kenny Bernstein, but he's in the finals as the Budweiser Spring Nationals begins to reach the serious finalist Joe Amato. I'd be a little concerned that Big Daddy Don Garlitz is in my adversary's pit area advising him on his choice of tires for the final round. I'm Steve Evans, along with Brock Yates, and that's all we have left, our final rounds in Pro Stock, Funny Car, and Top Fuel. First on the pad, Pro Stock, a repeat of the Cajun Nationals, as we've said, Butch Leo, the Pontiac Trans Am, up against Warren Johnson, the Oldsmobile Forenza in the far lane. And remember now, these two guys, this is a uh, second uh, face-off for them in the last couple of major events. And at the Cajun Nationals, remember this. Johnson versus Leal, and it ended right there. Red light for Butch Leal, squeezed it a little bit too tight, and that ended it. So, it's a moment for revenge for Butch Leal as he goes up against Warren Johnson. And I'll bet you, Steve Evans, that Butch is going to wait that extra, extra millisecond to make sure he doesn't get that red light again. I don't know if he is, Brock. Warren Johnson has lane choice. You'll remember Leal said when notified Johnson had lane choice, I'll just have to drive a little bit harder. So who's to say, but I'm sure those uh, Cajun Nationals memories uh, nag at him just a little bit. That was the second final he had red-lighted away this year. Now Warren Johnson of Farlane, Butch Leal, they move up. No game being played, as sometimes you see. There's a red light, but this time it's Warren Johnson who red lights. Butch Leal will drive on to victory, even though it looks as if Warren Johnson crossed the line first. But it's this man, Butch Leal, winning the Budweiser Spring Nationals with a revenge and a flip-flop of the results of the Cajun Nationals where he red-lighted. This time, it's his adversary, Warren Johnson. Let's have another look. There you go. The Christmas tree comes down. You see the red light with the gray and black Forenza, the loser this time. So, what's Leo in the victory circle here at Columbus, Ohio? Well, here is one happy driver, Butch Leo. A little roll reversal. He red-lighted this time. Well, we're pretty good competitors, you know, and this, uh, oh, Steve, I don't know hardly what to say. He, he, he returned the favor, I would say, and, uh, it's about time we got in the winter circle for everybody. We're here at hometown, and, uh, this Castro Nationwide car did it, and not all the guys at the shop deserve all the credit. I'm just in here driving, that's all. Did you go to the starting line with a little different attitude than a week ago, saying, don't do it again, Butch? No, what I did last week is, he was, the lane choice was a little different down there. Here they were pretty equal. And what I did is, I gambled last week. I went one, two, three, and I let the clutch out, and I rolled snake eyes. Well, the day I said, I'm not going to do it anymore. I can't get by with it. Well, I've got some more good news for you. You also ran quicker than he did. Oh, great. He must have shook the tires, I don't know. <laughs> but it was a great race. Butch Lale, his second NHRA Pro Stock Championship. Won at Atlanta last year, and now the Spring Nationals. <laughs> and the first congratulations come from his teammate, Larry Morgan, who drives a Pontiac Fiero for the Castro GTX Nationwide team. Okay, that's one down and two to go. As far as finals are concerned, it's time now to make some serious noise and smoke. The people down in the starting line area will literally feel the ground, the asphalt vibrate when the funny cars and compass are burned out. As Kenny Bernstein is doing right now, it will be Kenny Bernstein, now of Newport Beach, California. Up against the car firing up there, candies and use, Leonard Hughes in the sunglasses. He says everything's okay. Put the body down over my man, Mark Oswald who is going for his home for first victory in a couple of years after a long dry spell, the former world champion in funny cars, but a man who has really had some hard luck the last couple of seasons. So it's a showdown between the reigning world champion, Kenny Bernstein, and a former world champion, Mark Oswald, in two absolutely.
absolutely first-class automobile. Well, just advancing to this point has really helped Kenny Bernstein as far as World Championship points concerned. Look at how intent Dale Armstrong was there. He was watching that rear tire, watching very carefully, especially the lettering on the tire, that helps him tell if it's spinning on that dry burnout. Hopefully they set their clutches up exactly the way they want them. There's no chance now. Everything is complete. All the adjustments, the blower pressures, the tire pressures, the clutch pressures, all set. So right now it's up to the two men in those cockpits, Bernstein and Oswald, to carry out the best wishes of their crews. Butch Leal has already put one Pontiac in the winner's circle. Mark Oswald has a chance to do likewise with this uh, Pontiac replica body, a beautiful aerodynamic kick draped over that chrome olive chassis. Well, this race is at hand. The crews have done all they can. It's up to these two drivers now. Bernstein hungry for those points, hungry for his first victory of the year. Oswald has it won since August of 84. Two very evenly matched race cars, three stage, neither driver in any hurry. Bernstein settles into the base. We have got a beautiful start. It is Bernstein out first. Kenny Bernstein by two and a half second. Who won it? The win like says, and Paul Candy says, Mark Oswald has defeated Kenny Bernstein in a real squeaker of a race. They ran four hundreds quicker than Bernstein at 576. He had a two hundreds advantage, so it was almost a dead heat, Brock. It was indeed. It was one of the closest funny car finals we've seen in a long time. An almost even start, just a little bit of an edge to Kenny Bernstein, but it quickly disappeared. Bernstein, though, appeared to be in it to well over half track. There you can see Oswald slowly overtaking him to win by two feet. There's a chance that the man under that helmet, Mark Oswald, doesn't even know who won that race. I can tell you, you did. Thank you. I couldn't tell. I'll tell you that. It's funny close. I came around even the last little bit. You had to have passed him right in the lights. Yeah, it just was right there. His car looked like it nosed over. He was out ahead of me just a little bit. Well, you outpowered him, just out-muscled him. Really? How quick did he run? Well, you ran a 576, he ran the 580s. Yeah, made it anyway, no. Well, you saw him all the way down the racetrack there. Oh, yeah, that was a hell of a drag race. You can't ask for any better than those. Well, let's see, it's been since, what, autumn of 84 that you won one of these things? Good job. Yeah, that's right. It's been a long time for the old Milwaukee Pontiac. We're finally back. Indeed they are. Spring Nationals champion Mark Oswald, car owner Paul Candies. Well, I'll tell you what, the folks in Ohio have got to cheer for their hometown boys. First, Butch Leal from right here in Ohio at Columbus, and now Mark Oswald from down the road in Cincinnati. He began competition some four days ago here at National Joe Raceway in Ohio. The Budweiser Spring Nationals is now down to two cars. The top fuel finalist, Connie Galletta, doing his smoky burnout and pulling over to the side of the track. Rocks that is in case he's leaking any fuel out of the tank. He doesn't want to back up in his own moisture. He always does that. It's a trademark in Connie's, and I'm surprised more of the top fuel drivers don't do it. It seems to work for Connie, though. You know, Steve, I think we better take a long, hard look at this uh, top fuel car of Connie's. It's one of kind of an old breed. We're going to see more and more streamliners coming into this sport, and you can see it over there a little bit on Joe Amato's car with that canopy on it. But next season and the years to come, they're going to get slipperier and slipperier. We're to a point where these cars will look like antiques. Well, Joe Amato's car is taking no chances. They need to tape the spark plug wires to the valve covers just in case one might vibrate out. So uh, this is the last round. you got nothing to lose. Uh, you apply all the technology as basic uh, as some of it might be. There is Jim Richards, uh, his crew chief, directing him into the staging lights. And there is Connie Coletta, one of his crewmen, wiping down his big rear slick for the last time. As you say, it's down to 1,320 more feet of racing here in the Budweiser Spring Nationals. That's all that's left. Two cars, one victor to come out of it. Two of the finest drivers in the business. And Amato doesn't leave. It's a single for Connie Coletta. He is on his way to victory. Brock, we got a parachute problem on Coletta's car. His crew concerned. I'm down here watching it. The chute is finally out, but a little bit late. He is going to get it stopped, maybe get it just a little dirty. Yep. Put the front wheels in the sand trap, but uh, kept it out of Mr. White's front yard, fortunately. So Connie Coletta out of the car. And a few moments of real apprehension there, because if the chute doesn't deploy here at uh, National Trail Raceway, you're in real trouble. So Joe Amato, an unfortunate end, as uh, Steve Gibbs, the NHRA competition director, comes over to console him. We've heard that it was a oil pressure problem. Joe just shut it down, didn't 
blow the engine up. Now, as Connie Coletta goes on to a big win. Well, you know, the race isn't over in this business until you get them stopped, and Connie, you stop with the front wheels in the sand. But who cares at this point? Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. An oil pressure problem, apparently, for Amato. Uh, the race was really over before it started. I didn't even know that. No, I just, I didn't even look over there. We staged, and I stepped on it and went for it. And then you think, oh, no, because you knew the parachute hadn't come out. No, I, we had some troubles with the mechanism underneath it, and I think the, I think the wire broke. They kicked it, putting it back in, and I knew we had the second chute, so I was looking for it. When the motor clean and dry after all of those problems in qualifying, who'd have thought? <laughs> who knows about this game? It'll make you humble sometimes. Indeed it will. Your first win this season, you had two last year, still got a good shot at that world title. That can all happen. It takes the end of the year, you start really finding out where it's at. <laughs> Johnny Coletta, he's won it all here at the Spring Nationals in Top Fuel Eliminator. And here comes the crew, and of course his son, Scott, all joining in what's going to be a wild celebration in the Coletta Flying Service Camp tonight. What a happy, happy man he is. Almost put it in the weeds at the end, but saved it when that chute finally deployed. The big winner at Top Fuel, Connie Coletta.